Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Two Drunk Guys Watch. My name is Rory McLeod. I'm your host, and with me for this episode is Sean Dickens. Say hi, Sean. Hey. And Sean, what are you drinking for this episode? I'm drinking a, uh, what is this, Lefroig 10-year uh, scotch. Oh, I've had that. Tastes like um, turpentine. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> we had a gathering about six months ago, and somebody brought that, and we are like, ah. I drank it and I was like, well, okay. It's a mossy, mossy turpentine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So for my part, um, I've got a couple things. Uh, I'm trying out this new uh, bourbon whiskey. Uh, this John E. Fitzgerald Larceny, uh, which is 92 proof, which is enough to knock your dick in the dirt, as they say. And then in my two drunk guys watch beer glass, I have a Sam Adams cold snap. So there we are. All right, so uh, for this episode, we have a return of the serial we've been watching, which is Zorro's Black Whip, which is the fourth Zorro serial from Republic. Um, it features a female Zorro. What? Yeah, and it's set in Idaho, um, a pre-statehood Idaho, and I think that the major conflict is that these... There are some pro and anti statehood people that Zorro is somehow in the middle of, um, so we'll, we'll talk about that once the uh, once the serial starts. And then following that, we have a film noir uh, from 1942 called X Marks the Spot, which is very exciting. So everyone, now make sure to hit your like button if you would, and subscribe for notifications about future content. Get your alcoholic beverage of choice ready. And we'll get started right about now. Challenge your imagination to come alive. And to battle yeah, with the Sean, come alive. Dungeons and Dragons. Look at that. I remember I this. The forces of evil as a Marvel yes. Show. Remember this ad? <laughs> oh, yeah. Batman reference in a Marvel commercial. Yes. Look at that. These were all role-playing games. Yeah, I just saw that indie game at uh, Half Price Books. Oh, really? Oh, did you buy it? No. How much was it? Do you remember? I think they wanted 40 bucks for it. Nah, that's not too bad, actually. That's pretty reasonable. It's been long out of print, obviously. So, Yeah, those were all... Uh, well, the D&D and the Marvel superheroes were definitely games I played as a youth. I did not play Indiana Jones. I, I may have played it once, but... Uh, Marvel superheroes, for sure, was a big influence on me, as well as the uh, the D&D game. So. Yeah, that was easy to, easy to play, that one. Had a, I thought that was a fun ad to add to our, you know little thing here yeah Zora is the black whip the name of his horse the black whip is actually the name of the character so so um, Warner Brothers I think put out a Zorro movie right before this and when they were getting ready to put this thing out um, Warner Brothers obviously different studio um, they claimed ownership of the Zorro character and so in the serial she is called the black whip and not Zorro I see. Uh, so the Zorro name appears in the title for some reason, but that's it. <laughs> Who's Hammond? Uh, isn't that the guy who played Spider-Man in the 70s? <laughs> that wasn't, his, wasn't that Peter Hammond or something? Pretty sure it's the same guy. And shockingly, there's a fist fight. Well, that guy brought a pickaxe to a fist fight. <laughs> that's a good idea. Of course, you get one shot with a pickaxe, and then you're done, so... Especially if you hit the thing holding up the entire cave. Right! <laughs> there she goes. One thing we figured out last time was that um, there's a female stunt woman playing Zoro. And, of course, during all the fights, she, she has the mask on, so you can't tell, right? <laughs> any, any better architects? Yes, clearly. Better mining architects. <laughs> this pistol whipped him. So they did the same thing in Radar Men from the Moon. The main character had a helmet on during all the fights. Smart. What? What? The? She's going to town on this guy. Look. <laughs> that guy dived right over the top of her. Yes. Eh. Also, they sped up the film. You can tell. Because there's no way you could do a whip that many times that quickly. Now, Mr. Black Whip, <laughs> take off that mask. Take it off, or 
I'll shoot this random guy. <laughs> I'll shoot this Better guy. Do it. I'll shoot this guy I came with. Yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all the bad guys in these serials are always caught off guard all the time. Like they don't think to like defend themselves or anything. They're like derp derp. She might have hit them if she aimed. Yes. All right. Here's some here's some vodka. This should perk you right up. So this is her. Uh, the person who's helping her, I guess. Wait. He's like a marshal Wait, or something. I'm not sure who he is. This guy? I, I keep forgetting. Yeah, he's like the male lead, but he's some schmuck. He's got the Lone Ranger costume on. Yeah. Wait, that's my horse! <laughs> Bring back my horse! Forget it! I'm out of here. That's the most realistic waterfall I've seen. Oh, that's her headquarters. Huh? This is the Whip Cave. <laughs> <laughs> I like that little stall for the horse. It's handmade. This hastily crafted. Oh, it's bespoke. Isn't that what they call it when you... Yeah. That's the new term for it. Now she's got a little secret door. So now she can pretend to be whoever the hell she is. She's like a newspaper reporter or something is her actual job. Barbara. I expect no, that's to Barbara Gordon. Go yep, there she is. That's where I'd be at the black well, the funny thing is, there's a character named Vic Gordon in this. Barbara's uncle. always turns up at the right time. This time it can be explained. Some of it, anyway. After he released me, he probably followed the outlaws to the mine. That must be it. But I'm still worried about you, Barbara. Why? Because you're in danger as long as I love how they can't possibly fathom her being the black whip. They're probably just desperate and striking out in the dark. They might have tried the same thing on you or the marshal, even on Ten Point. <laughs> They'd better not. Ten Point is so worried about you, he's down to his last bottle of zitter tonic. Oh, Ten Point is this comic relief. You'll see him in a minute. I'll he's he's like the newspaper editor or something. I'll go along and do a little guard duty. Uh, it's not much comedy or relief. So is this guy like a prospector, or what? What is he carrying there? This is Zeke Hayden. Glad to know you, Zeke. That makes it unanimous. What do they call him? Bindle sack? Tell me you're nigh on as good a man as your brother was. Oh, I'll never be that. Or a dead body. I'd be riding the rails right now if they had rails. How about you? Any luck? Yep, well, this is around, we figured this is around 1890, because that's when it be Idaho became a state. Congratulations. Isn't this a story so there the probably is a railroad at this point. Zeke doesn't buy my printing it. I don't know. Why, the news of a gold strike will spread like wildfire. It'll bring It'll spread like syphilis. To Idaho in the statehood. That's what I was figuring, but I couldn't say it's fancy. Uh -huh. Maybe it wouldn't be wise to make the location of the strike. I had all my teeth removed. I the location of my strike. I took care of that. That's good, Zeke, but fix right. We won't mention any names or places yet. They got this guy out of central casting for prospector guy. Maybe, but I got to have it assayed. I'm <laughs> sending this to Capital City by stage. We're going into town. We could take it into the stage office for you. Thanks. That'll save me a trip. And they leave. Well, Bye. They take his gold and take off. Oh, they, they are taking off. So he trusts them with his gold nuggets? Okay. Sure. Brooks Assay Company, Capital City. They are the Hip heroes. They're trustworthy. Mm. Yes. Oh, cap they're headed to Capital City. Capital City, Gold Idaho? Where? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Boys, it was uh, copyrighted. They weren't allowed to use it. It's a bag of rocks. Yep. Perfect. That's mighty high grade ore. That's some great quartz. Looks like old Zeke really has made a strike. When this news gets around, we'll be swamped with settlers. Yes, and every one of order for statehood. What what do they call We've fool's gold? What's the actual name of it? It's like um, pyrite. That'll check the gold rush. Pyrite. There you go. First, yeah. I want to find out where this strike is. It must be near his camp. Well, not necessarily. It might be anywhere within twenty miles of it. Just ask him. Let's just Harris, let's just carpet bomb now, the whole place. And, finish him off. <laughs> and tell them also not to bungle this one, or there'll be some notices in the paper. Yeah, Sean. No bungling. So casual about talking about bumping people off. 
Yeah. Probably have some of that in the movie, too. Some bumping off. Well, you can read it over the shoulders of everybody in town. Yep, yep. Them shoulder readers is what's cramping our circulation. <laughs> You're cramping my style. He's, like, oiling the printing press or something. <laughs> yeah. What's he doing there? <laughs> I mean, I guess it's something you got to do. Well, I... I can't think of a single objection. Good. We can stop the director's like, you've got to do something during the scene. Paper. You can't just stand there. Couldn't you sell a copy for once? <laughs> <laughs> No, we're just gonna go hand these out to people. Now you're gonna tell us where your gold strike is. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You struck gold someplace, and I want to know the location of your strike. That's right. I ain't struck nothing. I ain't Somebody telling you nothing, moon, coppers, Winston. or whatever you are. You know all about the ore shipments you've been making. Ooh. Get that poker. We'll make him talk. Oh, they're gonna make Thank him play poker, long. huh? They're not getting him to talk with a gun to his stomach. Is the poker gonna make a difference? Well, he's immune to bullets, so, but not fire. <laughs> They're gonna burn his feet? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, Baxter. Oh, well, that's where he was hiding this his map. Alright, his back's turned. Get the jump on him. There you go. Look, they're constantly unaware of their surroundings. That's what I told you earlier. <laughs> <laughs> they're so pathetic. He says no cover either, and they can't hit him. He's standing out. Okay, now he's behind something. No cover. <laughs> He no stands boots. out by his, his tent. He's just pew, pew, pew. They're like stormtroopers. They can't hit anything. This guy will hit them. Oh, for sure. The, the heroes will, yeah. Yeah, he could do is wait till he gets up and then shoot him. Or you could keep shooting at the crate he's behind. I don't know. Half his body is up above the crate. Just wait. There's three of them. Why doesn't one of them try to flank him? Right. <laughs> no, they're too dumb. They can't. Well, this guy's trying. They're they're intellectually uh, challenged. <laughs> that guy's high enough now that he can get shot. Oh no! Ah no! Dramatic fall. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. There we go. And Wilhelm scream. Nope. Okay. This is pre Wilhelm scream. I just couldn't afford it. No. Well, no, this is before that was recorded. Like, the actual well on screen. I'm not gonna make it! He winged me! Hey, give all my gold to the Black Whip! Bad, Whoever he up. is! I, I don't feel <laughs> up to going that far. It might be better not to move him. I'll drive to the ranch. Right, because he's, he's mortally Bye, wounded. Barbara. I'll stay here and do what I can for Zeke. His spirit is broken. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I can. He was barely hurt. <laughs> I'm gonna stay here and die of sadness. Oh. I'm gonna die of ennui. Uh, so that's where the claim is. Hammond will be glad to hear this. But not if the old man's still alive. We can't get him with Gordon there. The you old man. Oh, Hammond's Jeff Bridges. <laughs> got a keg of powder and rolled off that cliff. Have you seen that show? Camp. Take care of him and Gordon. Too. No, I have not. That's very good. You should watch it. I should. I remember you recommending it on there Facebook. There is a season two coming out soon, Hello? I think. Hello, Ten Point. This is Barbara. What, what's his name? Ten Point. Sure. No, I think it's Ten Point. Oh, That's his right. font size. Well, you know, Miss Barbara. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, Pika. Ten Ten Points. Well, what did she just say? I forgot. Same old story. Trouble for you, worry for me. <laughs> Knee slapper. He remember he's the comic relief. <laughs> There's one in every town. Yes. One of the previous episodes, he was he was uh, Thanks. making a joke about his alcoholism. That was his. That was his contribution to the film. The printer. The guys, yeah. He's not even bleeding. I know. Like he's well, they can't show blood. It's 1940. Well, I guess they could. I mean, they could have, like, a dark patch on his arm. Oh, oh. look, the triple X. Oh, uh, no. Got the barrel of uh, black powder. Nope, it's booze. Comes Yosemite Sam. No, it's booze. Here comes Gordon. <laughs> it's, uh... Booze with a wick. It's rum. Yeah, they, they, they got the wrong XXX barrel. <laughs> I got the cartoons, they have that, right? Like they have the XXX for booze. Try to shoot it? Yeah, shoot that stupid barrel. Can they hit the barrel? Oh, they're going to shoot it. Maybe. Oh, this is the cliffhanger, I bet. Oh! 
He's lucky these, that worked. <laughs> these goons are so stupid. Jesus Christ. They're practically killing themselves. <laughs> They're distracted by literally anything. There's no point in giving them guns because they drop them as soon as, you know. Up the <laughs> Why do they even have guns? They never use them. It's gonna be done with them before the Black Whip gets there. Well, I sense the cliffhanger's coming, so I don't know. She'll probably arrive right when the cliffhanger, like he's gonna go over the side here. But he is on the edge of the cliff. Oh, they have to blow up that barrel. Someone's gonna have to shoot it or something. I've noticed she spends, like, at least half of the serial riding towards the danger, and not actually fighting. Here she goes. She's kind of dressed as a matador. Or like a, um... Oh, here we go. Like a mariachi band, right? Like a the guitarist. <laughs> There's no, no way anyone's gonna prove that's a murder. <laughs> How did she escape that? Well, there's no way she escaped, Sean. There's no way. Somehow it will continue, though, next next episode. Man, I gotta worry about her for the rest of my life. I know. Well, you can watch the next episode or two Drunk Guys Watch. We'll have it on there. We'll assuage your concern. Speaking, speaking of assuaging your concern. Sleeper. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stunned. I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> no one does. This is an ad for sandwich bread. Yes. Oh, a mattress. She was some kind of actress back in the mid 70s. I, I've heard the name, but I couldn't tell you anything she's been in. Or singer, I don't you know, whatever. You know, they don't do ads like this anymore. No, and they should. They should. I want some caterwauling, you know, woman in a very flimsy outfit singing about my mattress. There you go, Sean. Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. Didn't you animate that? Oh, there I am. This was my first job. <laughs> Dude, actor. Oh, I remember this. Dr. Damn? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a pretty ballsy name for a kid's toy. I like it. This is head off to the side. It's weird. Ace McCloud? Are you related to Ace McCloud? I No, it's spelled wrong. So no. All right, X marks the spot is our feature film. Well, it passed the National Board of Review. Thank goodness. No questionable content. Oh, Jack LaRue. So that's Lash LaRue. Um, he was in uh, Westerns later on. He is, his big thing was a whip. Nice. He was known for his whip work. He should have been in Zorro's Black Whip. George Sherman. Oh, George Sherman. Yes, that last LaRue guy acted it well into uh, his 80s. Eddie, what is your patriotism? Force cup coffee, sugar, by second time. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> ha, ha, you stupid immigrant. Sugar. Was that supposed to be an Italian accent? That reminds me. Sure. It's a Montenegrin accent, Sean. What is that, a telephone? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> My number is Prospect 7119. What's yours? Oh, it's you again. Nobody else. Uh, this is Delaney's little boy, Eddie. And one of your devoted fans. What on earth? Philly, he's going good tonight. He's going good. Well, All right. Mister, I don't know what to say. It's like a Have jukebox I really service. Like phone sex. A very pretty speech. Like, <laughs> what is? <laughs> what is he doing? Play a record for you. Okay, you pick it out. Anything at all, as long as it's Irish. Oh, so you call in and they put a record on what the hell yeah it's like a jukebox but it's done over the phone it's a telephonic jukebox so it's like before they had jukeboxes maybe i guess wow okay 
Yeah, that must have been in the 50s. Like, I don't know. That's interesting. Uh-oh. The heat. Hey, you there. I'm looking for a fugitive. Huh? I'll give you a description. He's a young fellow about six foot tall, wearing a brown suit. And of course, the cop is Irish. He has a fast line of foolish talk. <laughs> of course. Every movie. <laughs> He's got a fast line of foolish talk. Oh my gosh. Don't make me pull out my shillelagh. Kiss me. Sit down, sir. Are they going to make out? Keep your thumb out of it. Keep your thumb out of what? Jesus. You don't mean to say that you finally got a case. Have I got a case? I've got a case of syphilis. Come on, come on. What's on your mind? Are you going to tell me now or do I have to take you over my knee? Get ready for why not and both, Pops? <laughs> <What? me. laughs> a little more respect, if you please. You happen to be looking a at little less respect, what? if you please. Did they really let you in? Will we you respect me in the morning? In the United States Army. I got the official letter this morning giving me three days to pack up my duds and kiss the girls goodbye. Well, pack well. up your duds. Is it the proud father I am today? <laughs> oh, that's his dad. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I lack some sense in that head of yours. Though I can't nah. see what possible use they'd have for a third-rate private detective. Is that so? Yeah, that's true. Well, they want me to take charge of something called G2. That happens to be Army Intelligence. The garbage collection. G2? <laughs> They'll have you doing KP inside of a week. <laughs> <laughs> KP. Oh, say, Dad. What does that mean? Have you got a nickel? Yeah, KP, I think, right, stands for Kitchen Patrol. That's where I you clean up after boxes. everybody. You know, if you've got such a case on that... Young girl's voice. Why don't you get up gumption enough to meet her, huh? Uh, no. Nope. risk. Never. I fell in love with a long-distance operator once. She turned out to be a retired lady wrestler. <laughs> oh, my God. I almost <laughs> killed her. Well, From Glow? Back to work. See that you can Gorgeous hold ladies of wrestling? So long, Dad. What's wrong with a retired lady wrestler? I know. She's probably only like 30. Hmm? The Elite Brewery. Is he out there uh, hooking? What's he doing? Are you looking to party, sailor? Nice going, boys. <laughs> Have any trouble? <laughs> nah, I was just saying, like taking candy away from a baby. You never knew any babies, huh? They sometimes can put up quite a squawk. So did these guys when we hijacked them. Put a little technique. These the same around. goons from the other show? Yes, they also can't hit anything with their guns. So this guy's kind of a uh, Humphrey Bogart knockoff, it looks like, in his little. Copper. Overcoat. I thought that was taken care of. It was, Marty. Honest. He's down there. He's a rain slicker. No, not a rain slicker, but... Oh, is that his dad? Let me do the talking. Is that... That is his dad, isn't it? Uh-oh. What's going on here? What's all this Isn't then? Just a little business transaction, officer. I'm thinking of buying this old warehouse. Any objection? I thought you'd retired from business, Mr. Marty Clark. You know, I think I'll take a look at it. Any objections? So they're going to have to blast this guy, even though it's, it's that guy's dad. Could keep his cover. Yep. <laughs> Wait, was that the same guy from the diner? I don't know. I'm guessing I think not. so. Cause no, because he didn't seem to. Yeah, he didn't seem to know him. Should be keeping him. Those trucks should have been here an hour ago. Maybe the boys. Oh, that's uh, Commissioner Gordon. A quick one, Mr. Underwood. Uh, those drivers aren't that stupid. stupid. No, <laughs> he, he was in another movie way. that we did. Well, we um, he was. Um, what was the name of that Get movie? That uh, the doll. Something with a doll. Satan's doll or something. Devil's doll. That's it. We did it like in season two. I want to say. What happened? He was the leader know, of a satanic the, cult. Uh, it was very different from his Commissioner Gordon role. Hey, uh. Although maybe not. I don't know. I haven't seen every Batman episode. Maybe he. Well. Maybe one, one of them he, he led along. a satanic cult. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Can't remember. These men better get to a hospital. Take care of them, Joe. The hospital? What is it? Well, it's a big building with <laughs> a bunch of windows, that's but that's not happened. important right now. <laughs> yes, trucks and all. A fine partner you are. You I took suck. You some protection, and now the rubber's gone. Listen. The, yeah, the rubber's you gone. You must have ways of finding out. About? The rubber's gone. Well, Unless you already so, know what happened. 
This couldn't be the uh, the cross, Wikipedia page for this movie is it. very light on details. Um, <laughs> this uh, is what it says. X marks the spot as a 1942 American film noir directed by George Sherman and Damien O'Flynn. I think that is also our lead. Um, it is a remake of a 1931 okay. film of the same name. Must have been good. Sure. So, in 1942, during the Second World War, rubber is a valued commodity. Eddie Delaney, who is our lead character, is a second lieutenant in the Army, but also a private detective. Eddie swings into action. Woo! Uh, When his father, Police Sergeant Timothy J. Delaney, is gunned down by rubber racketeers. Just as a matter of routine, we rounded and up that's all it says. The bad boys <laughs> and gave a going over. And I feel bad oh, for so taking far, no rubber for granted. Anything else? Y- yes, you did. And uh, I so a report last night that two we can also talk slugged. about the I other actors and stuff. In, but after getting first the director, the which I, I like to do in some of these. Like the old days, 18th Amendment. These gang wars are tough. So I wanted to mention, we don't normally do film noir. We've done maybe like two or three film noir movies. On this channel, still, so not, not a ton. Maybe a private dick like you could uncover a lot. Of uh, so I thought I would kind of describe this to people. Uh, is a okay. cinematic term oh, used primarily to describe stylized Hollywood crime These dramas, particularly those that emphasize like cynical attitudes and motivations. Thanks, Bill. The 1940s and 1950s are generally regarded as the classic period of American film noir. Film noir of this era is associated with a low-key black-and-white visual style that has its roots in German expressionist cinematography. There we go, Sean. What do you think? Uh, That sounds accurate. Business pretty quiet, huh, Marty? Oh, it's been nice and quiet until now. There have been a couple of... There was a Steve Martin movie where they tried to make it like a film noir. The man who knew too much or knew too little, I think. When That's not right. The 18th Sounds right. The man who knew too much was the Hitchcock sure, noir. No, no, it was a play on that. It's like the man who knew too little. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So that's obviously a modern, and that was in the 80s, I want to say. Now, they wouldn't be friends but there's a ton like, of famous. Like Gattaca would be considered a modern noir and uh, Blade Runner. Sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The tone, right? Not the cinematography, but the tone for sure, yeah. I don't expect to be pushed around. Yeah, so those that you're talking about are referred to as neon noir. Neo? Yeah. Neo noir. So neon noir includes Taxi Driver, Blade Runner, um, Black Velvet, or Blue Velvet, sorry, and Lost Highway. So... Anywho, if anyone's interested, there's lots of uh, film noirs out there. A lot of them are public domain. And also newer films that are uh, a take on film noir. There's also science fiction noir, apparently. Oh, yeah. Look up Eddie Mueller. He does a thing called Noir City. Okay. Tours around, but he also hosts a noir show on Turner Classic Movies, I think. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm Mr. Delaney, I've come to you on a very important matter. Have you seen important Batman? to you or to me? Well, to me, mostly. Oh, I see the police commissioner in this. You. Your name has been suggested to me as a private detective who. Uh, no, I think he's a bad guy. Is, it, is he a police detective? I who? could probably find out who shot uh, me. Commissioner Gordon. No, uh, he's Mr. a bad guy. I've only got two days before I'm due to put on a uniform. Well, and two I... days might be time enough. The job I have in mind will pay well, say, uh, thousand dollars. Neil Hamilton. Why that kind of money? Is our Commissioner Gordon. This particular job is extremely confidential. I don't think so, because he's trying to hire this guy as a private detective. He can't be with the cops. That doesn't make sense. Well, I would like to put a private investigator on it, you understand? You see, last night somebody slugged two of my drivers and stole the trucks. Uh Uh-oh. He's a business owner. What was in the load? I think he's the leader of the rubber racketeers. That sounds like a band. The rubber racketeers? Possible that I'm facing some sort of a trade war. You see my competitor. Now, if this were 1930 and you were in the Alki racket, I'm in the warehouse and trucking business. Sometimes I buy and sell jobs. Yep, he's a mobster. (laughs) Will you take the case? There were three writers credited on this. That seems like a lot. Because there's just a chance that this case might have something to do with another one I'm working on. 
So um, this movie has a 5.2 out of 10 on IMDb. That's pretty impressive. It's pretty high for one of our movies. We did one um, a couple weeks ago that had a one something. I thought it best to keep them undercover. Okay. I'll take a run. The tagline on the poster says, Black Market Czar exchanging human lives for blood soaked profit. What was on the card he handed him? Did it say, Have Gun, Will Travel? Yes, Paladin. What was it? Uh, it said, um, Cable, like San Francisco or something, and then it said, Have Gun, Will Travel at the bottom. Yep. I've actually watched that show. It's pretty cool. It's one of them newfangled. Yeah, it's one of the better uh, black and white westerns, in my opinion. Yeah, I've been making my way through it recently. I think I'm on season three. Oh, wow. Okay. We have a channel here uh, that shows those kind of programs. In fact, they have a whole western block on Saturday afternoons. They show uh, Maverick, Wild Wild West, that show. I think they show Wagon Train, I want to say. The Rifleman? Yep, Rifleman, yep. Zach Drowers, what do you want? You got a couple of patients here Mr. Underwood sent me. Yeah, That's the Undertaker? Drivers. They're not allowed to have any business. <laughs> Look here, this is important. <laughs> Uh-oh, maybe not. Now, one of them is very angry. He wasn't quite dead yet. I'm not dead yet! At the hospital. I'll, I'll be fine in a minute. They need Eric Idle out here with his little cart. Bring out your dead! I was just admiring that car. And now we have Bessie. Eddie this is also you. known as O Grito da Morte, which I assume is the Italian or something. Who's that strange Hello. poster? Yeah, sure. 55 uh, minutes Eddie, running time this, this time. One for you too. <laughs> yeah? That is Delaney. What do they say about those license plates? What is that on the counter? Oh. A droid? Well, uh, yes. Anyway. It's, a, it's an astromech droid. Something else just struck me. Is that like a shake mixer? How would you like to meet me at Marty's Spot Cafe? Maybe it's a Bruce shake weight. Marty's. Well, this is a lead that might blow it's pretty big for a open. shake weight, though. I don't know. Meet you outside the place in half an hour. Right. So the director of this thing is George Sherman, who sounds like a Hi. combination of those oh, characters in the Sherman and Peabody. Remember the cartoon? Know things, Eddie, when you hold out, yeah, honey. Peabody and Sherman. Well, there yeah. it is. Um, those two truck drivers were born in 1906. I was in this joint asking some questions of Marty Clark. He runs and died in 1961. I'm sorry, 1991. Oh, wow, he was. Uh, came along, Marty was in the clear. You see, he 82 when he died. His income tax paid up. All right, what's that got to do with me? Well, it just struck me that everything about this whole affair, the shooting of your old man, and all that is right off. One the obituary said. His credits rival kind of thing, in number those of yeah, anyone in the entertainment industry. Hey, wait a minute. I, <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Before. Come on. At age 14, he sailed aboard the SS Mongolia <laughs> to Los Angeles. <laughs> From where? The number. <laughs> yeah, SS the Mongolia. They couldn't uh, New York City. That's a hell of a trip. Now, what more do you go through Panama? Clark, the Panama right? Canal thing back then? Uh, uh, 1908? Yeah, I think so. Looks like you're right. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Where he no found work in the mailroom of Warner Brothers. Of Besides dealing with a guy like Clark, you need a warrant. Otherwise, you'd be out on a writ. Now I'll run down the city and get a be film back editor the friend. He's got connections okay. downtown. Somebody might tip him so off. He worked his way up from the mailroom. He doesn't know you. Yeah, he's Why also credited for working on props yeah, right. on Gentlemen well, for Blondes, but I know how you not the Jack Lemmon version. This one is 1928. Sure. Yeah, I didn't realize that was a remake. I didn't either. And he worked on a bunch of silent films and then kind of worked his way into talkies, of course, in the 30s. Just out of curiosity, yeah. could you point it's not out a job that exists me? anymore, the right hat taker. Table in the corner. The no. Miss well, Muppet's maybe thing. in some places. <laughs> um, so he, was, he started off as a director in 1937 working for Republic, who are the people Where'd that made that me? short we watched earlier, the serial. Hey, where's the phone? Over there. His first film was Wild Horse Rodeo. Right. He directed Three Musketeers, Outlaws of Sonora, The Riders of the Black Hills, and Heroes of the Hills. A bunch of, uh, oh, he's did some Gene, Gene Autry. I want to talk to Mr. Underwood, Mr. John Underwood. 
Who? Hello, this is Eddie Delaney. Speaking. John Underwear. Yes. Wasn't Mr. Underwood in Fletch? Wasn't that the guy when he went to the club and was charging everything to Mr. Underwood? Yes, yes, Delaney. You wanted the name of the man behind the hijacking of your trucks. The empty ones you told me Fletch. About. Fletch is underrated, the same guy I think. That what happened to your drivers this afternoon. That was a good movie. Yes, yes. The name is yeah, Clark. I think he charged everything to Marty the Underwoods Clark. at the country club. Marty Clark? That's right. And that cleans us up, Mr. Underwood. Marty Clark. Like so this director did a ton of serials and stuff for Republic. I'm trying to see if he did any that we've Marty done on here. Clark. I don't think so. Do we know who Marty Clark is? Marty Clark. Let's see. Is he in the cast list? Oh, don't get any yes, ideas. that is that is Lash LaRue. If you don't like this payoff, maybe I'll have to get my. But I'm probably not going to recognize him because I'm used to seeing oh. him. He was in a bunch of Rift Tracks maybe movies, much older, else. so I probably maybe won't recognize him. Recently. Yeah, maybe Mr. Marty Clark has forgot we was witness to the shooting of a cop the other night. Witness? You were accessories before, during, and after the fact. In fact, you right can't now. Talk, you can't quit. You can't get out of this until I say you so. Can't quit me. And I'm not going to say so. I take the dough. That's all you get. Okay, Marty. That's the way you want it to be. Mm hmm. So then yeah, uh, our George Sherman guy went on to Columbia Pictures where he did, let's see if he did anything we've ever heard of. The Bandit of Sherwood Forest, The Crime Doctor's Courage, The Gentleman Misbehaves, Talk About a Lady, Renegades, what The Personality boys, Kid. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard of any of these. Okay, Dizzy. I think he's just like a studio guy that just did everything. Yeah, and then he went on to Universal. So I'm guessing maybe some monster movies. Oh, Yvonne DiCarlo. He did a movie with her. Way before she was in The Monsters, right? Oh, he directed a movie called Larceny. That's the name of my booze I'm drinking. Yes, sir. That's Marty Clark in person. There he is. In person. He's got the Walt Disney mustache. Come on, let's dance. I want to show you off. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yep, that's Lash LaRue for sure. Yep, I recognize him. I mean, even though he's a lot younger, you can tell it's him. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so let's see. So, Larceny, what else? I'm trying to look for anything that anyone's heard of. Calamity Jane. That's my baby. It sounds like... That's my baby. Look, Mr. Underwood. I didn't say anything about coming Ooh, out. Oh, he launched the film career of Jeff Chandler. Who the hell that is? I told you you'd have your check in the mail tomorrow. <laughs> the check's no good to me unless you're alive to sign it. Marty Clark's bad medicine. Oh, customers. Bad medicine right is what I need. <laughs> <laughs> I need. <laughs> hey, Wasn't that Bon Jovi? <laughs> uh, let's see. Return to Westerns with Comanche Territory. You. Never heard of that. Are you Marty Clark? Yeah. Spy right, Hunt. Your time. Well, this is a busy night. My card. The Sleeping City. I haven't heard of any of these movies. <laughs> Are you researching Jeff Chandler now? No, I'm still working on this director. A little more privately? He did an Errol Flynn busy. movie this is a of business, against all flags. I'm guessing some that's a pirate movie. Tires. Well, I'll try and uh, the Veils of Baghdad. Now, these are all like kind of third rate, you know. Let's see. Free her and then him. Her. What if you went into her by mistake? Hello there. We ought to know each other if you're going to be around. I'm Bonnie. Oh, yes. You're the uh, check room girl. That's right. And you, you're Marty's new dish. And then Freelance, he did. Yours. Later on, after Marty gets Some other an officer, garbage I've never heard of. Or sing the Treasure or of tricks. Pancho Villa. Meanwhile, you'll mix with the customers. The That's hard Marty's man. Routine. I'll bet. His work so often, he never has to change it. Last of the Fast Guns. I haven't heard of any of these movies. I'm, I'm surprised there's not a single thing on here I've heard of. Honey, I was getting lonesome for you. He did some episodes of Rawhide. I've heard chill. of that, at least. Then I saw it just because I left you alone for a few minutes, I The Flying <laughs> on, what Fontaines. You Jesus, what are these movies? The Wizard of Baghdad. That sounds interesting. Hellbent for Leather. Okay, now that was a... Uh, wasn't that Judas Priest? <laughs> What's the guy's name? Hellbent for Leather? The director's name? Oh, uh, the hell is this dork's name? Oh, George Sherman. Oh, yes, certainly, right away. Billy, it's the blackout. Something's going wrong with the air raid sirens. And they want I kind of want to see Hell Bent for Leather now. That's the only one on here. The rest of this is all just... He did a ton of movies. It's just They're all like these kind of B-movies and stuff. Attention, please turn your lights out. 
What? What do you mean? The chief warden just <laughs> called me. It's so they're just going to interact in this machine the whole movie? Don't get excited. Take it easy, folks. There's nothing to get excited about. You're safer here than you are out in the street. Don't get excited, Sean. Just take your seats and stay calm. I don't know. He's panicking. Why is everyone panicking? Maybe because that guy has a gun. Hello, sister. You listening? Yes. Keep this thing grinding. Okay, here they come. Keep it grinding. Keep, Keep it grinding. B bump and grind. Come on, baby. Let's start them dancing. And it still works because it uses the phone lines. Right. Jeez. So um, let's talk about our star here, Damien O'Flynn. Born 1907, died 1982. An Irish American actor of film and television, originally from Boston. There you go. I oh, know. He was murdered. He made his screen debut in Marked Woman in 1937. Who did it? Can't we have some lights? No, you can't. Stand back, everybody. Don't touch him. Help! He was at Gunfight at Comanche Creek and the Far Country. Well, I've been to the far country. Earth. And he appeared in 60 episodes of The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp. Sorry, Lieutenant, we were held up. Somebody turned in a phony air raid alarm. Help! Police! He was in some sitcom called Adam and Eve in the 50s. All right, folks. And he played a desk clerk in one episode of Green Acres. Stand back, everybody. What an illustrious career. Riley, you watch the door. Let's see how far into his filmography this pretty movie is. So it's pretty early. You did a pretty good job, Delaney. Cut it out. That isn't funny. Yeah, this is like All his. Right, I'm what happened? Eighth well, movie said credit there was a is this movie. Yeah, it was a girl on a jukebox. You know the voice with the smile. All the lights were turned out. He Body sounds like that guy who's in a bunch of those Clint Eastwood movies. That kind of white-haired guy. He's kind of small and dancing. impish. <laughs> All right. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Somebody let him yeah. have it. He sounds just like that guy. Hey, wait a minute. You talking about me? You're talking we about me? She should have done that like, uh, all, you know. And I'm tired of so hanging out here. <laughs> but, yeah. Right, or, um, sit down. yeah. Check on that jukebox angle later. One of those Italian-American actors. <laughs> De Niro. Why am I drawing a blank? De Niro. There we go. That's, yeah. She couldn't. So that's her name, is it? Now, look, Eddie. I'm not saying I blame you for this, but in the eyes of the Lord, still murdered. I warned you before you came in here not to take the law in your own hands. I'm telling you again, I didn't rub him out. I rub him out. Excuse me? Hey, Lieutenant. Wow. Look what I found. Now we're getting somewhere. It's a gun? Check on this at headquarters. See it's if it's a gun. W 6 34 Oh, they got the serial number. Okay. You don't have to check on it, Bill. That's my old man's gun. Ooh. I'd like to thank the guy that shot Marty Clark with it. That's the way it should be. Don't give me that stuff. You're the only one who'd have your old don't man's gun. Don't give me gun. that bullshit. Because it was turned over to you along with the rest of that stuff, and you know it. The cop kind of looks like Kirk Douglas. I don't see how you better well, make it good. this guy? Oh, yeah. yeah. He he does. Does. yeah for sure. Yeah, especially office. the mouth and the chin. Nobody yeah, for sure. Nobody could have got hold yeah. of it. It's like Kirk Douglas's stunt double. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Could be. How much longer are you going to keep us here? Can't you just make the arrest and get it over? Can't you just... What's this? Right what's this British that, accent? Mister. You can all go now, but leave your name and address um, at the door. Okay, so our female lead is Heron, Helen Parrish. She's the one on the phone or whatever right, the thing is. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Born 1923, died in 19... You're under arrest. 59? Are you out of your head? Anybody here could have done it. She died when she Come was on, 30? Eddie. Wow. I hate to do this. Yeah, she died at age 33. Don't try anything funny. That's crazy. I wonder what happened. He just punched the cop in the face and took the gun. Took the evidence gun. She died of cancer at face, age 33? Yikes. How old is she in this? If she has a squirrel. She would have been... 20... 4, maybe? 25? If he wasn't guilty before, he's guilty now. He's guilty of being a putz. Yeah. Punched the cop in the face and stole a murder weapon. She has a star on the Walk Decker, of Fame. Oh, wow. I want you to send out a general Dedicated broadcast. in 1960. Wanted for homicide. Edward Delaney. That's kind of odd. Well, so, in case people don't know, you can buy, essentially, you can buy a star on the Walk of Fame. As long as you've been in, like, movies at all. In fact, you can't get one without well, either you. buying it or having Only someone buy it wire. for you. On this kind of a job, you get to know people just by their voices. Sometimes so I'm thinking that's what happened here, because she certainly was not a big star. Goes with a voice. Then you're willing to swear it wasn't Delaney that called and ordered that phony blackout? Of course, it was an She was in Leave It to Beaver. Kind of well, you'd know it if you heard it again. I most certainly <laughs> would. Got a Hitler mustache. Okay, you can go back to your work. 
But remember, you're a material witness to this thing. You yeah, he does. Sure does. We're During World War II, that's so pretty don't ballsy. Don't try and leave town. Don't try and leave town. Maybe that is Hitler, Sean. Yeah, might be. I mean, that makes the most sense. This was actually filmed in Berlin in his bunker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this looks just like his bunker. Yeah. So this was actually one of her last movies. This actress, the um, the lead actress here. She was in this, and then she was in Mystery of the Thirteenth Gulag. Oh, guest. <laughs> Gulag. Why? I wish. I don't know. Uh, no. Of course. Cut it out. This is official. All right, sister. Oh, it's official. I gotta finish my beer. You want to talk, or do you want to come down to headquarters with me? Let's do both. Come on, come on. What about it? Well, gee, mister, I... Oh, shit. <laughs> she took him out. You sure gave him a bop in the gook. But he's <laughs> the gook? Writer, isn't he? <laughs> a bop in the gook. All right, Mr. Delaney. Stand All right, well, I have no polished way. off my cold Linda. snap, and I'm now turning the to the larceny. I've got, like, two and a half Linda. fingers of this larceny. I certainly don't need it for the movie. We're, like, already so two-thirds of the way through it. <laughs> a voice with a kiss. There Say, she is. You know, you got the face to go with it, too. You know, you're giving me a real boner Did here. Did you bump me with this? <laughs> I'm holding you for the police. Billy? He's, he has an unconsciousness oh, come boner. On, come on. Now she's holding the murder weapon. But she if I don't is. find out who did, I'm cooked. The policeman says they have a perfect case against you, and they seem My to think we were cooked. My news is This uh, larceny is pretty smooth. Well, now, I, I just got this the other day. If we turn you over to them. Maybe there's a reward. Okay. Okay. Your reward is me not slapping you around. Here's your lunch. <laughs> she's just like the people in the cereal. They just, just oh, completely look. forgets she's holding a gun. You're in this just as much as I am. Somebody used you to set that blackout, and they're trying to use me for a patsy. Gosh, I don't want to get mixed up patsy in Klein? anything like this. Which are mixed up in it. Crazy. Come here again. Don't say anything about recognizing that voice. Crazy but I've already told the police. Way, hey, oh. hey. Well, don't say any more about it. You think that mustache that is drawn on with like a pen? Recognize his voice. It is. Really it's a mascara pencil. Because I don't know how do? you get your mustache that thin. Yeah, like, I know there's a way girl. to do it, but it just seems... I don't know. You'd have to do it with a just razor, I guess. I don't know. Where's the phone? It's in Unless you just naturally it. have thin, like, facial hair, maybe. Oh. It's under attack. It's under What's under attack? Under attack. Oh, the headquarters. <laughs> Check this shit out. I have that. Yeah. I used to have one of these until like, 10 years ago. I have most of those things in the commercial. I have that. I have that. I do not have the uh, the big laser gun, though. The HAL. The HAL. I do not have the HAL. I knew that thing was probably like 30 bucks. This is Eddie Delaney. So, yeah, so we started putting commercials in the middle of the movies because I thought that'd be fun. Listen, Delaney, I, I'd like to hire you to protect me as a, as a sort of a bodyguard. Wearing a tuxedo body with a bathrobe. <laughs> well, I'm a little hot to appear in public just now, but I'd like to hear what you have. I'm a little say. hot. Be there in 20 hot minutes. Hot and spicy. Here goes for solving the Underwood's quickest case Underwood's always of my career. dress up for bed. Yes. So I have almost everything in that commercial. The only thing I don't have, ironically, I don't have any yeah. Cobra Troopers. He's different. And how he's I don't different. have snake eyes. I don't have the original snake eyes. I have like a retro snake eyes. And how? And how? Hey, somebody left this open. Oh, is he dead? Is he slumped over his desk dead? Let's hope so. Mr. Underwood? Oh, I think yeah. you're right, Sean. Hey, Mr. Underwood. Mr. Undertaker. Oh, jeez. Oh, Commissioner Gordon, no! Oh, that's the bat phone. He should answer it. John Underwood speaking. Oh, Mr. Underwood, you know <laughs> this is Donnie, the hat check girl at the spot. Sounds just like him. Listen, Mr. Underwood, I know who killed Marty Clark. Oh, what's the hat check girl? I gotta get out of town, I need a couple of hundred dollars. My dear young lady, you'll have to be more definite than that. Listen to me, you don't know what a spot you're in. Yeah, what spot is he in? Where are you? Where can I call you back? Well, can I come to your place and talk to you? Oh, it's a no, I'm nude. Crowded right now. I didn't touch your thing. You I can't come you over. I'm nude. Never mind that now. Go on, search the house, boys. Uh oh. Finally, you come with me. 
Here comes some more goons that can't shoot straight. Grab one of those vases. There he is. You do? No, he should grab one to use as a weapon. Bonk him on oh, the head. Oh, the one behind them? Yeah. You could probably take out oh. both of those, who is this? those idiots. You know who this is, Mr. Underwood. Are you stalling me? This is the police. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the heat. Somebody. Somebody in here. I'll call the coroner. You look around the garden. Maybe Underwood was talking to her. No? The okay. coroner. The coroner. What is he doing? Climbing he's humping. Fence. He's humping the wall. What's wrong with that? <laughs> That's what you do in this situation. Well, good night, honey. Sure, you'll be all right. <gasps> Lesbians. Yes, I guess so. Sure. I wish I could stay with you, but you know, Mom. I assume they're lesbians, sure Sean. Never mind. This makes sense. Good night. I mean, it's the forties. There's lesbians. Hello, is anyone home? <laughs> Who did the lighting design in this apartment? Uh, not me. Let's put all the lights behind banisters. Yes. That's where you put your lights. So this was released in November 4th, 1942. Don't touch it. Nothing's gonna happen if you're small. So we were well into the war at this point. The U.S. had joined the war, obviously, after December 1941. So this is almost a year after we entered the war. You're the one who. Oh, you had to remember my voice, huh? It's so muffled. Here, let me move this thing off my face. It'll be easier to talk. No, she faints. She didn't even land on the fainting couch, Sean. <laughs> is that what that is? How does he know where she lives? We we put it there for a reason. He's a private detective. He's been sucking her for months. He's been sucking her for months? Stalking. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, maybe both. What's her name, Linda? Wait, am I Linda? Linda is our female lead. That's Helen Parrish. Remember, she just, she just met him like two hours ago. No, but they've been talking through that jukebox thing. That's good enough. It wasn't a nightmare. That's the same as common law marriage in many states. There are marks where he jimmied the window. And I thought you were the Long time caller, first time listener. Never mind what you thought. We're both in the same boat now. You know, you, you could probably dust off that jacket. To it's a little, uh, that means we've got to get him before he gets us. A lot of chalk you. on it. What happened? Oh, I, I fell in a dumpster. Into a little trouble at Underwood. Oh. He's dead. But I got a tip that made. I help. killed him. Oops. Oh, Eddie, I'm scared. Don't be scared, honey. I'll practice honey? my guard duty for you tonight. <sighs> hey, uh, have you got a cup of coffee on you? Everybody you know and everyone you love is. Falling dead tonight, but don't be scared. That's not my fault. Let's see if she's got any booze in here. Oh, I'm just gonna lay down for a little bit. Get my shoes all over her couch. Oh, yeah. You take cream and sugar. Anally, yes. She, <laughs> he takes it black like his men. <laughs> Is that what it says in the Wikipedia? <laughs> well, that's from airplane. Remember, the, the little boy comes with a tray of coffee, and he asks the girl if she wants cream or sugar. Remember? I do. You know what I'm talking about. You're messing with oh. me. I take it black like my men. And she's like nine. <laughs> Anyone watching this who has not seen Airplane, first of all, shame on you. Second of all, go watch it. Morning. I've actually met some people recently who have not seen Airplane. I, I rectified I that. You dozed for about nine hours. I'm surprised he didn't look under the covers to make sure his pants were still on. Yeah, really. She probably, yeah. Hey, what well, she put them from? back on when she was well, done with them. Out of your pocket, got the address from your driver's license, and went to your place and got them. Jesus. I'm sort of a girl Is that the Maltese car? Falcon on the radio back there? Say, yep. by the way, how did you find this place? Well, that's a fine question to ask it. Yeah, this movie is actually a sequel to, oh, or this is a prequel to Maltese Falcon. Ah, thanks, Beam Girl. It's bad enough to be a fugitive without looking like a tramp. Oh, another thing. Oh, is this lady in the tramp? In apartment. Oh, you mean the police? No. Don't tell me you found a dead body in my apartment. Not very dead. It was a blonde. 
Uh oh. Maybe she was from the draft board. Sure. She's been waiting for you all night. When I came to get your clothes, she left without saying anything. Mm hmm. Wait a minute. But her lipstick was that must smeared. Be Bonnie, the check room girl at the spot. She called up Underwood and tried to make a deal. She knows something and she's trying to peddle it. I've got to get hold of her. Just relax. You're not going anywhere till you change your clothes and have some breakfast. You can dress in there. And have sex with Bacon me. Eggs in ten minutes. Okay, dream girl. You're the boss. <laughs> dream girl. Can I make a phone call first? Sure. Who are you going to call? Sean, who's he going to call? He's going to call the, the record lady. No. Oh, wait, that's her. No. He's going to call Bonnie. No. No. Underwood. He's going to call Underwood. Who are you going to call? What do you say? Oh, he's going to call the restaurant oh, guy. No. This is the record. Who are you going to call? He's going to call uh, your employees gave us AD Do. Last night. The name Ghostbusters. Is Bonnie oh, right, right, right. It's the cops. I can't believe I had to. That's where she Force lives. that out of you. Crescent Apartments on Hastings Drive. I should have been right on the Four top of your head, speech. as it should be. Two one, two one. Okay then. Mm-hmm. Bye, thanks. Daddy. Then it's no cop. That's right. Say, who'd want Bonnie's address anyway? Hey, what is that device you just put like down this. on the table? And what's more, our new boss ain't gonna like this. I think I'll just let him know. Who's the new boss? No, well, they got rid of Commissioner Gordon. It's probably the Joker. Same as the old boss. No, it's probably Cesar no, Romero. Not. That'd be amazing if it was Cesar Romero. <laughs> Wait a minute. Somebody might be watching her apartment. Or uh, Burgess Meredith. I'll make a phone call first. This guy's competing with Cesar Romero yeah. for the best mustache. Oh, yes. Can, you talk? Can I talk? I've been trying to find you for hours. Mr. Delaney, would it be worth $200 to you to know who killed Marty Clark? Not really, no. The answer is yes. Well, don't come here. I'm being so I was—I I watched these away. collections of Leave old trailers on YouTube, and they're pretty cool, minutes. like these, these vintage, like 60s, 70s, 80s trailers. And there was a movie where Burgess you Meredith was the leader of a satanic <laughs> cult. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> and I kind of want to see it. <laughs> Do you remember what it's called? Hey, I forget. I'll have to go back and find it. But I'm not waiting it, anywhere. It, it, it looked amazing. Hey, I'm like, well, there's no way that I can show that on here daylight? because it's probably not public domain. But maybe it, I don't know, maybe. Well, I'll have to take that chance. You're I'll have to see if I can find it. And it is. I'll buy that well, for a dollar. But Burgess Meredith, and someone else was in it too who was kind of surprising to me. If you want to be a backseat driver, get in the back seat. Keep your head down. There's a traffic They're already arguing. We've only known each other for five hours. Oh, I told you they're common law married. That's how it worked in the 40s. Yes. Spend the night at somebody's couch. That's what you do. There she is. Um, Burgess Meredith was in a lot of movies. Hello, Bonnie. Just FYI. Hey! Played Galobulus in G.I. Joe the movie. Burgess Meredith did? Yes. <laughs> he was uh, he was the mentor guy in Clash of the Titans. Yes. Also, he was the. Come on, Perseus. What are we gonna do? Uh, he was also in um, we're supposed to report a dead body Rocky. He was a bunch of he was like the Don't his trainer in Rocky. Trainer, yeah. Gosh, the way she fell forward. I'm trying to figure out what this one. movie was that I saw. You're leaving town right now. I'm Burnt off offerings? Here. Keep on no, it doesn't ahead. sound oh, like it. That killer's out to mow down anybody who gets in his way. Yeah, Burnt oh. Offerings. Oh, he was in Golden Needles. That oh. is a uh, hilarious movie that I wish I could get. Um, it stars Joe Don Baker, and it is this Hong Kong opium thing, and the trailer looks amazing. I'm like, I wish I could get it. I tried to get oh, it, and it got blocked. Know. What was it called? Uh, Golden you. Needles. Oh, but look, honey. Are you coming with me? I would love to get that. That's not the movie you I'm talking I about, but I, I forgot right, that he was also in that. It won't take them long to find was out it called The Sentinel? Anybody? Maybe. No, I Don't think it is that Burnt Offerings in movie. Let's see. Let me click on it. Uncle Sam will take me if I'm up to my neck in a murder. Murder? Three murders. Then you just have to break the case in spite of everything. And I'm sticking until you do. What's next on the program? Oh, th yeah, this has got to be it. Well, let's see. I was thinking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. it's got to be it. For me. So, Betty Davis well, is in it. Is to work over those boys at Monty And Club. Burgess Meredith and Karen Betty Black and Oliver Sometimes Reed. Yes, this this, this movie looks detective. amazing. Burnt you Offerings. Well into the spot 1976. Yeah, I know, Technically, I could get it, Just maybe. But watch. again, YouTube blo sometimes blocks stuff that's... They really shouldn't. What's the name of Clark's henchman? Is what? Wow. Betty Davis in a satanic whatever movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
Okay, Mr. Delaney, I'll show you how it's done. Burnt fun. offerings. All right. Okay, we got 11 minutes for this thing to redeem itself. Actually, this movie isn't bad. It's just kind of a little dull. I don't even know what's going on. There's rubber and stuff, and some guy got shot. That's all I know. We've been talking over the whole thing. <laughs> She's wearing a doily. You're not she is. Please. Billy, listen. I won't be able to get in tonight. Can you Billy, carry do, on? Billy, don't Why lose my sure, number. Honey? What are you up to? Wasn't that a Phil Collins? Manson? Yes, in reverse. Thanks a lot. Wasn't don't that a Phil Collins song? my number. Because you're not anywhere that I can't find you. Maybe it's about that radio yes, thing. It is. It, that song's about that, that device. Yeah. For a match? That guy kind of looks like Jack Nicholson. Jag or Jack? Jack. Actually, he looks like that guy that played the... Um, he was a comedian that did a bunch of deadpan humor. And he played the manager guy in Dilbert. If you want to do it, tell him. I know some gay spots. Oh, I don't usually go out with strange men. I'm a dependable type. Let's go. Well, there's a catch. He was always it. some kind of we'll a smarmy. I'm trying to think what happen. else he was in. He was in some Where's 80s movies, too. I'll change it for you. I'll figure out who that actor is. There's a live action Dilbert show? No, it was a cartoon, but he did the voice. I mean, she's going out with this guy now? Well, yeah, she gets around. Tire, oh, it's right behind you. Hey! What are you doing? What? What are you giving me? What are you doing? Giving me bad medicine. Talking, is he? Why should I tuck? Larry Miller. That's the, the guy I'm thinking of. I got enough authority to take you down to the federal building. The government. I know you've seen him and stuff. Fed? Not the federal well, building. Let me make a deal. He was in Pretty Woman. I thought I. I'm trying seen to think of what you would have seen him in. I'm sure I'd recognize him if I saw him. Yeah, I'm looking for a movie. It looks like mostly late 80s and then early 90s. Mid 90s, let's see. You ain't fooling me. He was. There was a remake of Carnival of Souls in 1996. Oh, he was the dad in Ten Things I Hate About You. Remember it with Julia Stiles and um, remember it was like a Heath Ledger. I don't think I saw it. Oh, it's, you should watch it. It's good. But anyway, he's like a, a dad of these know? two girls that oh, are. No. It's um, that? it's a kind of a, a modern twist on um, um, oh, Shakespeare. Killing of the Shrew, Jamie and the Shrew. No matter what you say, I'm not. Or Killing of the Shrew, whichever one you like. Do we have to go through that again? Yeah, but he was the dad There's in no that. Danger, Let's see what else. Me. It'll only be in the way. Look, honey. If I see one nutty line, professor. I'll call the cops quick. Will you promise Princess to do that? Princess Diaries. Sure. I don't know. I'm sure you'd recognize him if you saw him. Look, honey, stay right here until I come for you. Have a soda or something. Whatever you do, stay he under the in that right terrible Get right. Smart re Get Smart remake. Are these guys? How's their relationship going to continue after this movie's over? Seems like it's all based on high drama. Drama. Police headquarters, please. I'm sorry, I don't have a number for the police. Yeah. Yeah. What? Holy shit! On Front Street alone. Drink some more of my booze here. Well, you have every right to be. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish my booze before the movie ends. That voice. I believe in you. Oh, hey. That voice is so sexy. Oh, no. It's a setup. But she's turned on by that voice. Taxi. Can't believe I have to take a taxi to follow my own car. Mm -mm. That's what happens when you leave it unattended, Sean. Don't go into the rubber warehouse. It's made of rubber. He's going to bounce all over the place. One man in the rubber room. I've been there. Don't shoot in there. It'll ricochet. Or chickashay. Hmm, car tubes. Hmm. Those are those round things that are underneath all the cars. Nothing says rubber like a pile of bicycle tubes. Is it rubber like a face full of lead? Or something. 20 minutes later, he's still looking at the same pile. <laughs> what is that? What is that writing? I, I'm... 
I'm illiterate. I guess I guess I should have learned how to Will read. You please hurry, driver. Lady, this Production is management. And said, do not remove this label under penalty of law. Or death. Or tickling. Under penalty of tickling. He's going to find the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, wait, it hasn't been discovered. <laughs> no, he finds it, but then it gets rerouted to Egypt. He's like, you know, I better send this to Egypt. Have you seen the newest Indiana Jones? Is that any good? The Dial of Destiny? Yeah. It was all right. Hell, what are you doing here? It's not, it's... It, the the name sounded very silly to me, so I was like, eh. It's my fourth favorite. Case and a lot more. Oh. You have? Yeah, come in. Fourth out of four. <laughs> See that? Four out of five. Higher. Well, we don't count the they others. Shia the LaBeouf one. There's a fortune here. But, yeah, I, I watched that before I went to go see the new one, and uh, it was actually worse than I remember. <laughs> I've not seen the new, the, either of the newer ones. That's impressive. I think we should play the Indiana Jones role-playing game before going to see the fifth one. I bet whatever story we come up with is better. Look, Bill, all you have to do is to stake some men out That's the only way you can prepare yourself. The whole thing has got to come back here to get the rubber moving. Like the funny thing is, so nowadays, me. there's How RPGs for, like, everything now. There's a Dune RPG. Up. They have RPGs for video hit. games now, Are like Fallout and stuff has a game. I don't know. I was just looking them over when I heard you coming. And they were going to make a Rebel Moon game, but it fell through. Like that Rebel Moon movie on Netflix. Oh, finally a fight scene. Jesus. I like how he's taken by surprise by the guy that he knew was standing behind him. I think they should put on... Those tires like the Michelin Man and fight each other. I think that's how this is going to end. That'd be amazing. Get an armful of tires and just start going at it. He's the one, Eddie. I recognize his voice. He's the, the one. I'm in love. Oh, the man higher up. Sure. You saw a chance to get back at Marty for hijacking your partner's rubber. Mm-hmm. You're trying oh. to pin it on me. Does he mean call condom? That phony blackout. He does. And he came back through Marty's oh. office and plugged him. Now, wait a minute, Delaney. Maybe we can plug them up here. Why you plug them up Delaney. with cheese. <laughs> okay. The kind of Where's the fuzz? The fuzz must be coming. Up, you. Oh, he bick slapped him. Cheese what it, Rory, the, the fuzz. <laughs> Wait a minute, Decker. She had nothing to do with it. Oh, no. She's going to forget the whole thing. Get All right, this going. is the big finale, Sean. we got like four minutes. I thought we finally had a fight scene oh, or something. Oh, most of this movie was just them talking. <laughs> I thought he had a sword at first. <laughs> what the hell? Don't leave that door. That, that's the shillelagh. That would have been amazing if he had a sword. He's just walking the streets with a claymore. He's like, yeah. I'm taking a bite out of crime. Brought a claymore to a gunfight. Yes. Well, given that these people drop their guns fairly regularly, I think a sword would be a good choice. Just gonna let him go, huh? He was just watching them leave. Why don't they extend their arm, aim, and then shoot instead of shooting as they're flinging their arm forward? Yes. Well, you should show them how to do it, Sean. <laughs> Noted pistolier. It's weird how nobody knew how to fire a gun in 1942 when the entire world was killing each other with guns. Yes. Not the entire world, Swazi land remained neutral. Okay. And um, also Benin. Benin was neutral. He's going to get the drop on him, li literally. He's going to fall on top of him. Death from above. Ah, no. He just pushes him. Did you ever see the TV show Luther with Idris Elba? Very good. Anyway, the very beginning of it kind of looks like this, in, in a sense. If you've seen Luther, you'll know what I'm talking about. So in the very beginning of the Luther series, they're, the, Luther and this bad guy are fighting in these, like, rafters. They look kind of like the, what's happening up in this movie. How do they know which one to shoot? But oh, wow. That was <laughs> quite the cut. That was a weird cut, yeah. Agents ...to E.J. Delaney, 
Local Link murders to hot rubber ring. Like, we don't want to show this Army. whole fall Who thing. We'll just show like a second of it. Father, rubber ring. You know, there was a Smith song called Rubber Thursday. Ring. I wonder if it was based on this movie. Number, please. Yeah, probably. No I, I assume you. Morrissey Thank watches you. all these kind of movies, so. What? Was this shot outside of Strangeways Prison? Wow. Yes. Get a load of the man. You're gonna see me Actually, Morrissey was a big fan of black and white movies. You can tell because of the like album uniform. covers and shit. Oh, they're mostly British movies, I mean, though. But you gotta let him get away. Well, we talked the whole thing over and decided to wait. Eddie thought it would tie me down to have a husband in the service. Eddie had uh, hey, his hair was twice as tall. He could almost be Morrissey. Yeah, he just needs a little bit of a bouffant a deal going. Wife waiting back home. Well, of all the dopes. Of you all the dopes. She thought this is no time to put a romance like yours in cold storage. Go on, go. So with she's him. gonna wait for him there to come back from the war. Is that what's happening? What do you say, Linda? It's a military secret, but I'll tell you on the train. Ooh. Well, come on then. Bye, Billy. But its letters are B J. Mm-hmm. Wait, did she join the army? Get what happened? Please. Listen, sister, I dropped in a nickel and I want to hear down Mexico way. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay. You want. You're going to hear the wedding march. What was it? The, Down Mexico Way was the name of the song he wants. Oh. For some reason I heard Die Bitch and Go Away. Oh, that's what it should be. That'd be better. I don't think they have that one, though. Um, No, uh, the, the two leads are getting married before he ships off to war. That was the ending. All right. That's great. Does, is there a sequel to this that takes place in the war? Yes. Yes. Um, no, there's not, thankfully. Um, all right, so that was X marks the spot. What did you think, Sean? Uh, I don't know. I'll give it maybe a three out of ten. Yeah. It was hard to follow. I had some bad editing choices. Yeah, it probably didn't help that we talked over a lot of it, too. Um, but <laughs> yeah. We don't really have a choice because it's, it's a little dull until, like, the fight scene at the end was a little exciting. But other than that, yeah, it was kind of dull. Anyway, we tried to make it exciting. What did you think of it? We did our best. Um, it was slow paced for sure. I mean, it only had the one fight scene in the whole movie. Um, so not very action y. But honestly, film noir, that's kind of the pattern. Like, the film noir is mostly talky stuff and people sneaking and, 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 you know, like stabbing each other in the back and that kind of crap. And then at the end, there tends to be some kind of an actual fight. So that follows the same pattern as most film noir that I've seen anyway. But yeah, it was kind of dull. So, and then we had uh, Zorro's Black Whip. What did you think about that? That was pretty good. I'm looking forward to seeing the next one. Yes. So we will be showing... That was episode... I want to say it was episode five. No, no, no. It can't be five. It's That was episode six. So we've got six more. Did you survive a barrel of exploding rum on your tent? Um, yes, because my tent is made of asbestos, as one does when you're, oh, prospect yeah. when you're prospecting. That's what you do. When it's 1890 or whatever. <laughs> right. All right, uh, I want to thank Sean Dickin for joining us on this episode of Two Drunk Guys Watch. Next episode, now we're going to have a bit of a hiatus because I'm moving. So we will. the next episode will happen after I finish moving. So it's going to be a couple of weeks. Uh, the next episode will be number 16, which is Goliath and the Dragon, which is like a kind of a Hercules sort of movie. Um, and then another episode of Zorro's Black Whip. So um, until then, keep things interesting. Next time on Two Drunk Guys Watch. Send into the depths of the lost worlds to meet his greatest challenge. could match the king's cleverness or cruelties. No man could match Goliath's might or Goliath's warmth. But when his younger brother falls madly in love, the boy becomes easy prey for the monstrous king whose greatest pleasure is inventing new ways to murder the unprotected and the innocent and bait a trap to bring Goliath to him. 
deep in the earth's dungeons, Goliath meets the fire-breathing, man-eating, three-headed dog of darkness. Then, with the might of a thousand men, Goliath brings down the wrath of the heavens on his enemies. Thank <laughs> you.